what we're going to do is just cut the stalks on the ground and I'll take the leaves off and put them in water so we've got them for some natural dye, like some botanical prints. So this is a raised bed full of fiber plants as well as tea plants at Trillium Park. We've got this long tradition as humans of clothing ourselves with plants. So it's really exciting to just broaden what can be a fiber plant and shift our thinking. Trillium is a park that was designed to have artists involved somehow and um, I was lucky to be involved in the design process. We have plantings here intentionally chosen for traditional hand technologies as well as our shipping containers and work bays as enclosed studio space for holding classes and for storing all of the materials and all the tools and everything. So one of the things we're doing is exploring a whole variety of wild fibers, uh, from fireweed to the dogbane or Indian hemp to milkweed, stinging nettle. We've grown flax, which is a early, early agricultural crop for textiles. This is the nettle plant. The research that I've done with community here has been around how the green stalks were processed by the Coast Salish ancestors for fish nets and also processed in different ways for clothing. So one of the things I love about it is that it's this plant that's a culture connector and connects my ancestors to the ancestors of the place I live. Nicola and I just harvested the nettle that is going to be used for a project I'm working on, two different tops or shirts that explore different ways of working with the nettle fiber. One way is when the fiber is what's called redded, which is a controlled rot. So these are just green nettle stalks that the leaves and the seeds were stripped off of. This is going to ret the nettle for probably the next four days and break down the lignans and the proteins. The other process is when you are harvesting what I call green nettle and you're stripping the fiber off of the stalks while they are still fresh. I like to walk the branches to crack the nodes. I find walking is a physically easy way to do it. Once they're stomped, I can just crack them open and slide the fiber off the outside. This is the green fiber that has not been redded. You can hear it, it's super crunchy. You can also just kind of feel the texture of it. It's very different from the nettle fiber that has been redded and then stripped off of the stalks. When I've got a nice big bundle in my hand, I'll roll it on my thigh to just help remove any last little woody bits. And the carding is very different than when I'm carding for wool. So this is dogbane. It's also sometimes called Indian hemp. And the fiber comes from 
a fluff in the seed pod, as well as a beautiful long red fiber that comes from the stalk. This is common milkweed, Asclepius. We'll get big seed pods with lovely silky fiber inside and beautiful silky fiber in the stalk. What I've learned so far is the milkweed actually just comes off better when it is fresh and end of season after a cold snap. We're taking this, the milkweed and taking the fiber off the same way as we've done for the dogbane and the, the nettle. So what I was able to do is to just crack that outer waxy surface, which is not as waxy now, and I can slide that paper off the fiber and then I've got my beautiful silky threads exposed. Some of these are starting to pop now. So what I can do is just run my finger down that as soon as I get it open to slide all of those out like that. So I've got this little bit of milkweed toe in here and I'm gonna put some of that fluff from the seed of the dog bane in there. Now I'm gonna just Roll that up. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm applying two different nettle drop spindles together, and one of them is a much tighter twist. That's my line nettle, and the other is much softer. It's gonna have some slub to it and some texture, but it's also gonna be nice and strong. And I'm adding water because that helps just get some of the woolly ends tamed down in place. So once I get these plied, I am going to take them off the drop spindle on a little mini skein and I'm gonna pop it in some water with some borax and some dish soap to scour. It's rinsed really, really well, hung to dry, rolled up into a ball and I'm ready to knit. Technically I started this shirt in terms of processing some of these fibers probably about a year ago. I've wanted to have a nettle shirt since 2002 when I first started kind of experimenting and learning about nettle and uh, I was always saying nettle shirt 2020 as a joke and here it is 2020. So I'm just trying to get a sense of what this might look like and then what my next step is going to be. I think what I'll end up doing is casting on on the side here just below that stripe actually becomes a nice point good So I'm just getting all of these fibers lined up and organized by rolling them on my thigh. It's kind of the biggest challenge. If you can do a three strand braid, as long as you can coordinate your fingers on holding all of the pieces, you can up that three strand to as many as you want. And of course, nettle is my favorite fiber it tells such a story about relationship to place and is one of those fibers that grows all over the Northern Hemisphere. For me, being settler descent, living on Coast Salish land, it has been really a key part for me of how I've connected to this place as well as giving me kind of a common bond 
and connection with local nation skill holders and knowledge holders that I've been able to work with. There's lots of similarities, but there's also lots of differences in how the nettle has been processed, depending on what kind of the end results were that you were wanting, whether you were making a fishing net versus making a sweater, you'd process the fiber differently. And so this braiding and processing method I'm doing is kind of a hybrid of the different methods I've learned. But I'm getting the crochet hook to just pull through some new fiber. This is how I'm adding and increasing. What I've done is stitch together the base braids that I started with to give me my sides. And then I've been filling in, pulling warp threads through and continuing the braids on. So that's how the sides have come in and then joined to weave in to this back braid. And I'm just kind of filling in these back components now and the arm, bring the arm around to about here. And this tail, I think, is going to get split in the middle. And some more fibers will get added in here. I think it was last August that I started very specifically uh, processing the nettle. And so I've had a year of processing and knitting at all kinds of different places. Halfway through the project, the pandemic hit. Community-based programming has obviously looked really different through the pandemic, figuring out how to do things in really small groups. We've done a few online sessions of having some online weaving time. So what you can do is clip off any of the branches with leaves that are kind of splaying out. Okay. Yep, perfect. And here I am, I actually am finishing a shirt in 2020, which seemed so ridiculously far away back in 2008. And it just takes me back to think about what this journey has been of, of learning and discovery and trial and many errors. When we think about where our clothing comes from, it's usually coming from a long way away. The footprint is huge for a garment by the time you're purchasing it and putting it on your back. This is primarily from a spot 15 feet from where I'm sitting now. There's been so many community members that are connected to this, so many individuals that have taught me or learned alongside me, and I know them. I have that relationship to the people, I have that relationship to the places, to the land, and knowledge of working with the plants. And these are really and truly both collaborations with Nettle. <laughs>